6 puts it positively and Jeremiah puts it the other side of the coin. Jeremiah chapter 7. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. So Jeremiah, here's what I want you to do. Stand at the gate to the temple and whoever enters in, I want you to tell them something. Here's what I want you to tell them. Verse, uh, verse 2, the middle of it. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah, who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the alien, the father or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I'll let you live in this place, in the land I gave to your forefathers forever and ever. But look, you're trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, we're safe. Safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house, which bears my name, now catch the words, become a den of robbers to you? But I've been watching, declares the Lord. So again, the idea is this. Uh, listen up, Israelites. Don't think that God dwells here and he's chosen you just so you can be blessed and experience all God's blessings. It's, it's not like that. You can't just go on living however you want. The reason God chose you, the reason that he's given you his name, is so that you can put God on display. So that you can proclaim his love to all those around him. So change the way you're living. Live the way God wants you to live so that you can put him on display. Don't think that you can just come into this place unchanged, you know, time after time, you're still a murderer, you're still a liar, you're, you're still living the ways of the world, and say, oh, I'm safe because God's blessing me. That's not how it is. God's purpose is that you put them on display. And so Jesus, now coming back to Mark chapter 11, comes into the temple, and he starts clearing out the court of Gentiles. And he's basically saying, listen, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you've made it a den of robbers. And, and the idea here is, is simply this, that the people were not putting God on display for the nations. And Jesus is just passionate that the nations would come to know him. You see that? So, so it's about expectations. When Jesus saw that tree and he saw all the leaves, he expected there to be fruit, but there wasn't. When, when you looked at the temple, it was buzzing with activity, but it wasn't bearing the kind of fruit that it was supposed to bear. And there's like this implicit warning. You've got to be and fulfill the purpose that God intended for you. So what does this mean for us as Christians? Those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ, who have been saved, who experience God's blessings, we have peace in our hearts, we know his love. What does it mean for us? That those blessings aren't just for us. We're blessed so that we can be a blessing. Do you see that? that? That's what his call for us is. We're blessed so that we can be a blessing. A couple passages of scripture. Uh, I want to really think about this from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are Christ's ambassadors. So imagine, just for a moment... Uh, the United States sends you out to be an ambassador to an enemy nation. And uh, your purpose is to let them know that, hey, we don't want to be enemies. We want to be reconciled to you. And, and that's your purpose as an ambassador. So you go there, you learn the language, you, you learn the culture. Uh, but then imagine it goes further. That you start to take on the hate that the people there have for the United States. And you say to yourself, I'd rather live here than there. You've become what? A, a traitor. We are Christ's ambassadors. And, and the idea is this. 
We bear God's name. We're, we're His. We don't belong to the world. It's not right that we should take on all the characteristics of the world and start to love the world more than God. And our purpose is to share the love of God with people around us. If we don't fulfill that purpose, if we don't put God on display, then we are failing as Christ's ambassadors. Another scripture passage. Dear friends, this comes from Peter, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world. See the same idea? This world's not our home. We're just ambassadors here. We're ambassadors for God here. To abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. What does that mean for us? It means we're supposed to put God on display. We've been blessed, we've experienced salvation, and now we have a purpose. That others who are in our life who don't know this love, who don't understand what it is that God's trying to do, we put them on display so that even though they don't understand us, even though they accuse us of doing wrong, we're living such good lives that people are drawn to God. And I want to urge everyone who's here today to just think about your life. How can you better be an ambassador of the love of God? I mean, this is the reason that God has saved you, that he's forgiven your sins, that he's given you the Holy Spirit so that you can declare to all those around that there's a better way, that there's a God who loves you, that you can bring people back to God. And I want to just urge you to consider, in light of all that Christ has done for you, how you might better be his ambassador and put God on display.